Hey guys, happy Monday. It is just me and the kitty cat hanging out. Just wanted to pop in and say hello. This is going to be the last month that I do the business coaching calls and the last month for the InDesign um, calls just for a little bit, uh, just because I do have a book that is due uh, in a few weeks and I just need all the time I can get to finish that. So just trying to shift things around and reprioritize, but I will be back and I will have everything ready to go for you. So um, don't worry about that. And I am pushing back the launch of the website page, but more just because um, I need to get some other things programmed and the schedules for other people just aren't going to work out with that May 1st date. But if you are here, just say hi. I wanted to talk about just some things, some resources, because everyone's trying to share a bunch of resources. You may or may not have seen them. Um, let me know. Hey, Elise. Hey, Asha. Hey, Marilyn. Um, this was a list from Shopify on trending products that you can think about selling. Um, I know that I'm not crafty. I, a lot of people are talking about how you can make face masks, and I think that would be very helpful to people. I can't sew anything to save my life or put stuff together. Even if there was a diagram and a video, it still just isn't gonna happen. Um, so don't worry if you like read that and it's just not for you. Um, that's not a big deal. Uh, what else? There was also an article in Entrepreneur that had 111 free tools. I just put links over here on the side. So if you are on YouTube, for whatever reason, I cannot add links on YouTube during the live stream. Sometimes it just doesn't allow it. Uh, so all the links are in Crowdcast. So if you're not following me in Crowdcast, it's super easy to do. All you have to do is go to crowdcast.io. I know it's a little weird, not com.io. And then uh, just follow Lisa Seifert. I'm the only Lisa Seifert. In fact, I think I'm Lisa Ellen Seifert. I don't know why that was. It, I don't know if there was not I don't think the only other Lisa Seifert I know of is there are two Lisa Seiferts that pop up when you do Google searches. I don't know if you guys ever Google yourself. There is a Lisa Seifert who's this blonde, blue eyed, beautiful looking, super tall model from Germany. That is not me. And there is also a, another Lisa Seifert who is this mom out in the Chicago suburbs who uh, just is on this tirade, um, does a lot of articles on furniture companies um, and how they're they're not safe for children. So that is totally not me because I never talk about kid stuff. Uh, so yeah, so those are, those are mine. I don't know if anyone else does. There's another, uh, the uh, person, there's an author, Lauren Lane. She always says it too. There's another Lauren Lane that is a model. And she's always like, that's not me. <laughs> I'm not her. Uh, so yeah. Marilyn, my alter ego is a licensed counselor in Texas. That's funny. Elise, I haven't found another Elise Salucci. Nice. Well, that means you have an awesomely special name. Um, yeah, it was funny. My friend Camila doesn't have a middle name. Her mom was always like, it'll just be easier for you to not have a middle name. And I was like, I could see that. My middle name is after uh, my grandmother, uh, my dad's mom. It's her uh, middle name was Ellen. So anyways, uh, I feel like a lot of people have the middle name Marie, just because when you're naming a child, sometimes you're like, I don't know what to do. And Marie kind of goes with everything, right? Like Jennifer Marie, Krista Marie, Anna Marie. It just rolls off the tongue. Uh, anyway, so we have a question at the bottom, um, which is from Vanya. So hi, Lisa, I'm trying to design a planner page that includes a to-do list, lines with check boxes, but also a section that has dot grid and another section that has a line grid. Thanks to our YouTube channel, I know how to do a page of dot grid, line grid, etc. But how do I do, say, just a one-fourth page and still make it look neat? Thank you in advance for your help. Um, so anytime you want to put things on a page, all you have to do is put bounding boxes. And that usually makes it look nice. So like if you have a to-do list, just put a bounding box around it. 
And it looks kind of ugly to you sometimes when I do those, but people won't even notice. They'll just appreciate that things are separated. Put another bounding box around some lines, put another bounding box around your checklist, and then it'll look like you have three distinct areas or four or however many you want to do, uh, and that'll help break up the page. Another thing you could do too is you could actually just color it. So let's say like something really light, obviously if it's going to be printed, um, but it could be like a very faint light pink or blue or whatever color is the theme for your planner. And then that could kind of differentiate that section as well. I always say if you're doing a printable, I wouldn't do that just because when it prints out, it's going to use a lot of toner and ink. And then people are going to be like, oh my God, this thing is taking like all of my ink uh, and it's taking forever. It does take longer to print. So that would be my advice. I don't know, even know if you're on here, Vanya. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, but let me know if you guys have any other questions um, about anything. I mean, I could just talk about stuff. I don't know about you guys. What did you guys do this weekend? I pretty much just, to be totally honest, I just watched TV. <laughs> I like, I had so much stuff to do too. And I just kind of was like, I'm tired. And I am just like, I just wasn't motivated to do stuff this weekend. And usually like I'm really excited because the week is so busy and on the weekend I'm like, okay, I can finally get some stuff done. But this weekend I pretty much just watched, oh, I watched Heart of Dixie, which I've seen like a thousand times, but Ben started watching it now with me too. Uh, so we blew through the whole first season, which is 22 episodes <laughs> or not even, I think it's 23, 22 or 23. So we like watched it like it was our job. <laughs> Like it was like a project to do. Um, Asha, love that show. Marilyn played games on the phone. Yeah, that's like the path of least resistance. You don't even have to get up. Yeah, I found it's funny because my phone, I bought this um, separate battery pack for the iPhone and I am burning through it. Like, I don't even know if you can see. So like right now it's only 10, 12. And this indicates that I've already used part of the battery. This case is already dead like 10 o'clock because I've just been doing stuff on my phone um, and I haven't even left the house like how sad is that so I totally feel you I don't even know if there's um I like I'm so old I don't even have know what the cool hip new games are to play on the phone so I was playing Angry Birds the other day <laughs> which is so old but that's what I was doing um clearly the cat is totally unfazed by this whole stay at home thing although I did teach the cat the um so if you have a dog like i keep doing like dog things so he knows how to do high five he knows how to jump he knows how to sit and now he knows the come here command so when you have a dog the way i was taught you put your hand down your palm open and then the dog puts his nose in your hand that's like how he knows he's actually made it because actually when dogs come they're like am i close enough am i not close enough and so i was told by a trainer that if he puts his nose in your hand that like totally is how he knows that he has fulfilled his obligation for the command that you've given. So the cat now knows how to come here and he puts his little nose in my hand when he does and then he gets a treat. So that that was like the only accomplishment I really did over the weekend aside from watching lots of TV. I don't know about you guys. Sometimes like the like every day, like the highlight of my day is just like, what are we going to order for dinner? <laughs> so. I don't know. Uh, oh, we have a question. <laughs> uh, Vanya, I am here, Lisa. Thanks. Is a bounding box the same as a shape? Yeah. Just make a shape. Just make a, you could do circles. Um, you could do octagons, uh, hexagons. I don't know what the difference is. It's the number of sides, right? <laughs> I think the hexagon is the prettier one. Um, you could do, um, what else could you do? You could like buy shapes. I mean, there's only so many shapes you can do. You could do like, um, you know how like they have the ridges. I honestly, I don't know where you could, you'd have to find a pattern, uh, but you could find a pattern of a box uh, that has like, like wavy lines or the zigzaggy kind of lines and kind of give your uh, sections a little more personality, I guess. So that could be something you could do as well. So, oh, there was a really good video I put out today um, that was on how to do a planner funnel. So Dean Graziosi, I keep saying Grazioso in the video, but it's Graziosi, and he is not a planner at all. He's just a dude 
that's really good at selling, right? So if you Google him, he's pretty much in pictures with Tony Robbins all the time. And he's always doing, which always cracks me. This is very much a dude thing, right? Like when I sell stuff, I just kind of kind of look nice and I have like a cute little background. But when dudes sell stuff, they will be standing in front of their Ferrari or they'll be like, uh, um, they'll be like walking to my million dollar mansion. And not that those aren't impressive, but I feel like all of those superficial things are things that really motivate men uh, more so than women. So in his videos, whenever I see ads for him, he's always sitting in his private jet or plane or whatever it is. And that's how he films videos. I would just like, I think I would just start laughing if I even like, let's say I had access to, I wouldn't even have access to a private plane. And then I was like, we're just going to film YouTube videos all day, <laughs> this private jet. <laughs> so, um, Fanya, thank you. Great. So anyways, that was a, he's a genius though at doing sales. So if you're ever wondering, we talked about this a lot in boss school where how do you do a sales funnel? Like what's the next sell? What's the upsell? What's the downsell? So I walked you through every single one of his screens that you see. You can totally just um, replicate that entire model and just put your own spin on it. Like maybe your planner is, oh, maybe it's the planner that's coming up next week, the budget planner. You could do a thing on how to how to manage your finances online, how to uh, get your family involved in finances, how to pay off your debt, um, how to get student loans forgiven. I don't know. You could do all of those things as upsells and downsells to the actual uh, course that you have, or maybe how to start an online business uh, or how to start a side hustle to make extra money. And all of those are related to somebody who would be interested in having a budget planner. And then that could be your funnel to get some more sales and upsells through that particular, just one planner that you're offering. Um, it's Cause it's much easier to talk and do a workshop than it is to create a actual product. So that's actually a lot of work. So just something to think about. Do you guys have any questions? I should check YouTube to see if anybody, see if anybody's on there. Um, how do I check YouTube? I will say though, my sales are down. Everybody I've spoken to, their sales are down. Um, so I find it always entertaining when some people are like, my sales are not down. You guys are all losers, right? Like, I don't know, maybe I'm not sure what they're doing differently. Um, I mean, it sounds like the same stuff that was being sold before, uh, but a lot of people have been claiming that they're thriving and making more money than ever right now. Uh, so yeah, there is one person though that has a niche. Um, he is He sells courses on how to program in Python. Uh, I met him in person, he's, so I totally believe him. He said he's just killing it with people who wanna learn programming, which totally makes sense. You're learning a new skill that's probably going to be marketable both for a job and for getting um, just one-off contract clients. Uh, so it's a very like in-depth kind of skill. So I could see that. Trisha, have you researched best printers for printing from home? Um, well, it really depends on what you want to do. I think the best printers are, I feel like I just made a video on this, but there are two printers I would get if you're going to be printing planners from home. I would get a laser jet that can duplex. That's the most important part. A laser jet that can duplex to do both sides because if you're making planners, you're gonna print on both sides. It would be very odd not to. Um, and then I would also get an inkjet printer uh, that can also duplex. And the reason I would get two is because I do believe that you can gold foil a lot of stuff from home and the gold foiling is going to increase exponentially the value the perceived value that your planner your workbook your journal anything that you're making has and you can just do that on your own now gold foiling will adhere to toner ink it will not adhere to inkjet so this way you could have both items on the page you'd run the pages all the way through um, your toner and then you'd run them through a second time through the inkjet uh, so or honestly, I would probably do, I don't know what order I do it in, whatever order works best for you. Uh, but that would be my suggestion on which ones to buy. Now, actual specific printers, I think if you're going to do a printer where you want to print all the way to the edge, there are printers out there. In fact, I think there's one for only like $100 on Apple. 
I know, Apple, uh, on Apple right now. Um, and so if you go to apple.com and you look at other devices, they have a printer that does print all the way to the end. And typically those are ink jets, not laser jets. Uh, so that's why they're so much cheaper. And the ink is cheaper too for ink jets. But that's what I would get if I were, if I were you. If you're trying to print from home. Plus you want a um, high capacity print. So the paper that you feed through a printer, especially if you're going to be doing uh, wedding invitations from home, you want a printer that has a higher capacity for taking in thicker pages because typically wedding invitations are made of cardstock. So even if you have to feed them through one by one, you just want to know that the printer can handle it. Um, it is highly unlikely anytime I've ever tried to put anything thick like cardstock into a printer, even when it says it can handle it, it ends up jamming and then it's a nightmare and you want to cry. Like there's nothing worse than a paper jam uh, at home when you're all alone. Like at work, you're like, I can call somebody, the IT person will come out. But when you're at home, nobody's coming to your help. The cat is not going to help you <laughs> at all. Uh, Trisha, thank you. Yeah. I mean, there are, I mean, San Diego is a small town. I mean, not that small. It's like, it's pretty small to me because I've always lived in Chicago or London or New York or something. But San Diego, even though it's small, it has a ton of different printers. They, I have found a couple of people with Heidelberg uh, presses in in the city as well. Uh, so sometimes it's just a matter of just becoming friends with printers. And I'm not even talking like, the nice printer place where you go in. If you've ever gone into a print shop, when you walk in, at first you're like, is this an abandoned building? Because <laughs> usually that's just how print shops are set up, at least the ones I've seen. Um, and then you're like, has anyone cleaned this since 1905? But if you find a good local printer, typically um, if you work out a relationship with them and you're bringing them a lot of business, and again, I always say just try to pick a couple different printing methods. Don't try to be everything to everyone. Like if you're going to do printers and you want to find a local printer you can work with, then you might want to go ahead and say, I'm only going to do, um, like this weekend I did the softbound planners. Maybe you only want to find someone who can do softbound with these uh, gold gilded edges. Um, that might be something to consider. And in fact, I think probably what's going to happen is it's hard to tell what's going to go on right now with China. But with the printer and vendor list that I have right now for Planner Academy, all of those printers and vendors I've reached out to, they're still working. Some of them are a little slower, um, but they're still fulfilling orders. But it's possible, right? So there's already a 25% tariff um, with working with China vendors, which still, even with the 25% tariff, it's still way cheaper than buying from the US. It's possible those tariffs might go up with everything happening. Um, I think it's still too early to tell what's going to happen, but looking for local printers and vendors might be something that will be a better solution for you um, going forward in case things, in the landscape change, right? And that's not really as cheap or as viable of as an option as it used to be. So the other site I always recommend is, so Alibaba has a ton of printers on there. Um, I don't usually recommend people from uh, some of the other sites, but I've noticed that a lot of them, because I'm on their mailing list, have reached out and they're all offering discounts like across the board. Um, so, to, so honestly, right now might be a good time to create a planner, especially if you're thinking about doing a mid-month planner, um, not mid-month, a mid-year planner that comes out right about now. So if you're not familiar with when planners come out, typically for the full year, like you're just going to do a straight out 2021 planner, right, for next year. Your planner should, in theory, be being designed right now, being sent to a printer. You should be getting proof copies, like by June, so that you can put an, like a total order in by July or August. And then you can start your pre-orders in September. Those planners, in theory, should ship out to people's homes right around mid-October and November. Now, the reason you want to do it then is two reasons. One, people by that time of year after the kids have gone to school and we're getting into October, they're super excited about the next year already. No one's like, I see all these, um, you know, best, you know, save the last 90 days or make this year count. I think those are great. But from a business perspective, I think those are a waste of time. I think you should always, always try to be looking forward to the next big thing. It's kind of like it's April 20th right now. 
Do you think anyone's really working that hard on their April goals? People are probably looking more forward to May than they are to like making April really happen. Um, and there's a ton of psychological reasons behind that. But if you were going to create a planner for 2021, that's the timeline that you want to use. Um, the other thing too, the second biggest reason is because of Black Friday sales. So tons of people everywhere buying planners. If you don't have your planner ready to go by Black Friday, you are totally missing out. Plus, you can always, they just allowed putting in um, electronic planners into the rising tide. So the rising tide always comes out with this, or maybe it's Honeybook. I think they're the same company, but they always come out with their like my favorite things or best things to buy. Uh, so you definitely want your planner listed inside of there for the next year. Now, Moving on from there, the biggest, uh, the second biggest sale is mid-year planners. So mid-year planners are usually doing pre-orders right about now, like usually right after spring break season ends. Uh, and then once those pre-orders are in, that's usually pretty, pretty much like the end of March, all of April, they usually come out in May. June is kind of borderline. It's almost too late, even though those mid-year planners typically start in July. Um, sometimes they start in June, depending on when they're going to launch, but usually it's July because that's the middle of the year. So those, those go from, you have two options if you're going to do a mid-year planner right now. You could have it go from July to December, or you could have it go from July to June 30th of the next year. Either one works, doesn't really matter. It really just affects the size of the planner. Now, I would say if you're going to do a huge launch for your 2021 planner, um, your sales, and I know people are worried about this, your 2021 sales will never be negatively impacted by doing a mid-year planner that goes from July to June of the following year. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but anybody who is going to buy a planner mid-year because they were so excited and love planner like that's like you really have to like planners to buy one mid-year they are still going to a thousand percent i guarantee buy a full 2021 planner because you're going to have new designs you're going to have new covers new colors maybe a new layout they want to see it they want to be part of it they're not going to say okay i'll just keep using this planner and wait till mid-year they're gonna to wanna to buy your new planner. So it really doesn't matter which one you do. Uh, sometimes people will be more apt to purchase a mid-year planner if it's a full year to June 30th versus one that's just July to December. And that's the only reason you would make it a full year instead of a half year. Elise, I am watching in your digital planner, I'm watching your digital planner videos and making my fish one now, uh, first one now. I hope to have it done in the next couple of months. Awesome, that's great. Um, so just so you know, I do have a digital planner video inside of Planner Academy. And that was the old Planner Academy 1.1, 1 1.0. 1 so that's what Elise is referring to. I think too, just so you guys know, I think um, a couple other things I'm going to offer, again, once the book is done, because I do have like a lot of writing I need to do. Um, so I think next month, in addition to offering the monthly pop-up shop planner i'm going to also try to offer a workshop so because i did want to launch planner academy this month it just didn't work out with everything going on it just feels weird to launch such a big ticket item um so instead i'm going to do a smaller workshop just on how to um well I don't know yet. I'll let you guys, I think I'm just going to let you guys vote because I think that's a better decision. So next month there will probably be two voting. So like this week on Wednesday, April 22nd, voting will open up for the May pop-up shop planner. And then I'll announce that on Monday, the 27th, when I launch the budget planner. And then same thing next month, I will have two voting things. We'll vote for the June pop-up shop planner as well as what workshop you guys want. Because I have, I can tell you right now, I have literally thousands of people signed up for the early bird list for notebook academy but i only have like a handful like a couple hundred signed up for workbook academy i don't know why i think people just uh that need workbooks are probably more course creators or people are maybe just using canva um or people are just kind of like using microsoft word i'm not really sure or having a pretty workbook just isn't as important as having a pretty notebook or a pretty planner so 
those are different workshops that will possibly be offered. Um, I'll put digital planner in there as well. So whatever you guys want, I really just want to do a quick weekend planner, like a weekend boot camp. We'll show up on Saturday for a few hours. Um, we'll break. So we'll go watch TV or hard and takes or whatever you want. We'll come back on Sunday. So in theory, you'll learn like 90% of the material on Saturday, you'll get time to practice it. And then on Sunday, we'll come back in case you guys have any questions and wrap up the rest of the, the workshop. Marilyn, I've been waiting so long for Workbook Academy. Yeah, you know, if you, if that one wins, that one wins. I know everyone's like, it could just be, just do it. Like the people who want it definitely want it. There's just like 200 versus like 2000 um, for Notebook Academy. So it's just weird how different it is. Like Planner Academy had, I think I want to say like 8,300 people on the pre-interest early bird list. Um, so that was all why that was always a definite yes. Uh, and then the other academies that I could offer just seem to have lower, like there's a few people that are diehard that like want things. And then there's other people like, eh, maybe, maybe not. Calligraphy is another one. Um, the calligraphy workshop never really took off because there just wasn't, weren't a lot of people interested. So I've decided instead for calligraphy, what I'm going to offer is just a resource book. So instead of trying to teach everyone calligraphy, I think people just want a list of what are your best resources? What do you use for engraving? What do you use for wedding invitations? Uh, where do you find paper? So and printing and all of that stuff. So I'm just gonna offer a resource guide, kind of like what I sent out today. I don't know if you guys have seen the emails that have come out, but today I sent a list of my favorite uh, online tools. Last week I sent out a list of all the things here in the office. So all of that I think is possibly more useful to people. It's like quicker and easier to digest than a course. You can just go through the list and be like, yes, I wanna buy that. No, I don't wanna buy that. <laughs> yes, I wanna, <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking about buying this or something like that. So. Hopefully that'll help. Oh, we have people on YouTube. Uh, Goddess Harmony, that part. Happy Heart. <laughs> hi. All right. Happy Heart is saying hi to Harmony. <laughs> All right. Do you guys have any other questions? Those are kind of the updates for everything going on. Um, but I do have, so my book deadline, I know you guys are like, whatever. My book deadline is March 5th. So I am working backwards towards that. Uh, so I will get the budget planner out on time. That's like halfway done. Uh, but after that, I'm just going to kind of coast because as soon as I turn that book uh, draft in, then I'm going to get revisions or I'm going to get feedback and then I need to do revisions and then turn that in by the end of the month. So that is kind of my other bigger project and why some things are just going to be pushed back a little. All right, guys. Well, if you guys don't have any other questions, I will see you next Monday. <laughs> so I'll be back here again anyway next Monday at 10 a.m. same time. And we are launching the budget planner. Um, LaBelle Marquise on YouTube. Hello, I'm a designer. Awesome. Um, Alicia Padilla, thank you for being fabulous. Aw, you guys are so sweet. All right. I hope you guys are having a great day. And remember, um, I do have a blog. I say I have a blog, but there's one blog post on there. I'm going to add a second blog post, which is the email from today that had all of the tools that I'm using. Um, so there's a blog with two blog posts. But basically, I don't have a link to it for my website because it's part of the new site. But just put in blog. Dot, it's a subdomain. Blog.prettyfabulousdesigns.com. And you'll find it that way. So... All right, guys. Um, oh, Sandra, I'm working, but I needed to know if I can reach out via email. I have a few questions. Um, you can definitely reach out via email. I am slower on email. Uh, I really wish there was a voice function. In fact, I know I never say this, but it is 9,000 times faster to reach out to me on Instagram. And I've always said not to do that, but Instagram, I can just record a message and it takes me two seconds. So if you guys have any DMs or questions, just email me, or not email me, message me on Instagram. I don't think I even know what my Instagram handle is. Um, where I'm pretty much just always posting pictures of the cat. I'll be honest, that's basically what I do. I don't know. Hopefully the link went through on YouTube. Message me in there, follow me. You can see pictures of Lucky all day. I'll just be chatting and updating. But if you ever have questions or just want to say hi, it is like a thousand times easier for me just to push the record button and give you a voice memo. So yeah, 
So I will hopefully see you guys on Instagram and otherwise have a great rest of your week. And don't feel guilty if you're not killing it or if you watch TV all weekend, it's totally okay. Um, and I will see you guys on Monday. Bye.